Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Um, that's backwards. There. Um, we're still here. Today was my day, the 24th, and it's uh, almost 6 o'clock at night here in the Eastern Time Zone. <clears throat> Today, on the 24th, it is Shabbat 11. Shabbat is the 11th month of the Hebrew calendar and the 11th day <clears throat> today. So I was looking very close at today as being uh, the day that we were looking at for um, perhaps the rapture to occur. A lot of people are looking at today and tomorrow. Um, they're seeing a lot of uh, things coming up. We have a green comet that's passing by. We have Russia that's about to do uh, some terrible things. Um, whether or not they were pushed into it, still, that's, that should be the the last thing you would want to do. <clears throat> we have uh, the elections that uh, took place in Israel, the Third Temple. That There's so many things going on right in history. In the last um, 74 years since Israel became a nation, we have not seen as much as we've seen lately. The animals walking in circles, the two calves with the seven on their forehead, um, all the red heifers that they found and flew out there, which apparently are still um, kosher. They're still good. They haven't developed any white hairs. So, in my opinion, <clears throat> we also have a meteorite that's like headed straight for us, and I'm not quite sure. Steve Fletcher talked about it. Um, not quite sure when that thing's arriving, but it's right around the corner as well. So I'm going to go into all the pictures that it took. It's been like 10 days since I've been on here. I'm going to go through all the pictures that it took and about halfway through, I'm going to go back into the timeline and take a look at it. And I did find something. It confirms for me anyway, on this timeline, that Jesus was in fact born on Tishri 15 on September the 29th. And I'll show that to you as well when we get into this. So, go into the pictures. We are going to start right here. A lot of new subscribers are on here, so I want to show this to you. I know it's harder on my phone, but everything's here. And it's so much simpler. Uh, if you're on a cell phone, it looks like mine. If you're on the television, I believe it's kind of, it's small to see. So um, I did not discover this. Um, all I did once I discovered this, this is somebody else's work here, but once I discovered this and it and, and felt like, you know, this is true and this is the uh, head of the year every single year, all I did was make a timeline and put all of the feast days and everything in an exact count from the head of the year. Now, there's one Bible commandment, one of the Ten Commandments that we have always said, and, and, and I, we've always said this, and that is, if you try to keep the Sabbath, you're trying to keep the law, you're trying to live under the law. No, that's fine. You can make that statement. It's true. We don't live under the law. But what about the other nine commandments? We do keep those. We don't murder. We don't lie. We don't steal. If you loved your brother, it covers all of those nine commandments. If you actually loved God and loved your neighbor like Jesus commanded, the greatest commandment, all nine of the commandments fall under that except for keeping the Sabbath. Now, Keeping the Sabbath, I don't think, has anything to do with stopping to work on a Saturday. I think it's us trying to figure out when the last Sabbath of the year, setting up the Sabbath for the following year, happens every year. And this does, in fact, happen on March the 16th. This is the final Sabbath of the year. God tells us in the Word that to keep the Sabbath, and it will be a sign unto you. As a matter of fact, if I recall, it says that 26 times in the Bible, to keep the Sabbath, for it is a sign unto you, which is what 
prompted me and pushed me a couple years ago to try to figure this out. And then as I gathered all this information from all of these wonderful watchers that are working on this stuff, and I put it on this timeline, it all fell perfectly in sync. And a few hiccups happened, which I couldn't explain. Like, for example, why did the blood moon happen on November the 8th? Why in the world did that happen on November the 8th? I have Noah leaving the ark on November the 10th, which is one year and 10 days after the flood began. The flood beginning on October the 31st, the first day being November the 1st, and going on for one full year and 10 days, and him coming out of the ark on Heshvan 27, which is November the 10th. So evidently, or obviously, this blood moon that happened on November the 8th had absolutely nothing to do with pointing out the flood. So what did it point out? It was falling two days before um, Noah leaves the ark. And previous to that, there are no events. I've noticed that when I find an event and I put it on here, it falls in like a piece, a puzzle piece. It falls perfectly in place. And again, there's been a couple of instances where it did not fall into place and I couldn't figure out why. And then the Bible tells me. I find the passage in the Bible. So March 16th is always the last day of the year. It is always um, the, sa the last Sabbath of the year, setting up the, the following Sabbaths for the, for, the, for the next year. It always lands on March the 16th. It does not matter what day it lands on. We adhere to a 365 and a quarter day a year calendar. The Enoch calendar is 364. Um, I could go into the length, but you could look it up yourself. It's called a side reel, S-I-D-E-R-E-A-L, side reel day, and it is, um, or side reel year, and it is 364 days long. And it, our Earth, in fact, turns or rotates around the sun in 364 days. But they add this day and a quarter correction each year, which is why we have this extra day. Enoch did not add that correction. And in order for us to understand the correction, God gave us an example in the Bible of Joshua's one long day, which means, let's say that March 16th is always supposed to land on a Wednesday. If it landed on a Wednesday, for example, just picking on a day, if it landed on a Wednesday, on March the 16th, that would mean the Tuesday previous to that or any day i i, I run into a, a day glitch after christmas um which i think has something to do with this day at a time so tuesday technically would be tuesday for 48 hours which makes up for that time and that's exactly how enoch describes it in the in the first book of enoch as being one day out of time you just reset everything resets on march the 16th March the 17th is always the first day of the year. Nowadays, they call it St. Patrick's Day. It's, Saint Ta it's a green day. It's that green that we keep seeing uh, having to do with um, the head of the year. So let's keep going. Here it is right here. Um, they don't say it here, but March the 14th and March the 15th, both days would be, for example, a Tuesday. And then March the 16th, as an example only, in example only, don't hold me to the day, um, but that is the last Sabbath of the year, setting up the Sabbaths for the following year. Tuesday would, would encompass 48 hours, the 14th and the 15th. So, this is where God tells Moses, this is before they left Egypt. God wants to make sure that they are setting up his calendar on this day, this day, on this day, God spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So, he changes it. The first month used to be September. This month in September, on September the 15th, Tishri 15th, is, oops, did I say that wrong? Tishri 1, sorry. On Tishri 1, used to be called Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah simply means New Year. There is a commandment here to the Jews 
to to Moses to change the head of the year to March 17th. Why do we think it's March 17th? It's the day after the day of equal parts. Why do we, or it's, a, it's also the day the four star alginib skirts along the horizon. It does this again on September the 14th and September the 15th being the head of the year previous to this command. So we have creation, we have a flood, and we have all this time all the way up to Moses receiving this command where the head of the year was, in fact, on Tishri 1, which is September the 15th. It was changed, but they did not change it, did they? They still call September Rosh Hashanah. It is not the head of the year. God changed it right here. Now, again, I just took a bunch of pictures throughout this this past 10 days, and I uh, I just uh, we'll just talk about them as I go through. The Revelation 12 sign happened on September the 23rd of 2017. She had the stars above her head. She was clothed in the sun, and the moon was under her feet on this day, and Jupiter uh, was exiting. This is the day of the Revelation 12 sign. 2,000 days after this day, to the very day, is March 16th, the day of equal parts, the day, the final Sabbath of the year. It could have been, it is, could have fell, fallen anywhere. But it falls perfectly here. I found this out. I believe I told you about it last week. I've shown you this in 2023. The day of equal parts is on March the 16th. You see the MAR up in the upper left, 2023. This is the day that there are 12 hours in a day and 12 hours at night. This is the day that Jesus said, learning that Lazarus had died he randomly, of course, there's nothing random in the Bible, but he randomly states, are there not 12 hours in the day? Why does he make this statement when discussing the death of Lazarus? So the reason he does is because this is the day that Lazarus died. He died on March the 16th, um, back when Jesus was uh, doing in his ministry. 600 years from now, from 2023, just under 600 years from now, time and date won't let me go any further. 600 years from now, March the 16th, will still be the day of equal parts. In the year 3000, I, I, time and date won't go that far, but in the year 3000, the day of equal parts will still be March the 16th. Now, I went back to 1800 because they did something, and I'll show you that in a minute trying to correct those 10 days that the church decided to take away from the calendar. They tried to correct it in this, or actually they didn't even correct it. They just, they just left it in there, but it is inaccurate, and I'll show you that in a moment. But here we are, 1,800, almost 200 years ago. Still, the day of equal parts will always land on the 16th. From the Revelation 12 sign to February the 28th, February 28th being Purim, Exactly 30 days before the cross is exactly, Purim is exactly 11 months and 11 days from the head of the year of March the 17th. Exactly 11 months and 11 days. Is this the reason we're seeing 11-11 so much? I don't want to wait till February the 28th. Trust me, I didn't even want to make the video once we pass the 24th because here we are on the 24th. 11.11 is also Shabbat 11, which we're in right now. But are we going to have to wait until February the 28th? I have one more date, which happens here in a few days, that I'll show you in a moment. But this is exactly five years, five months, and five days from the Revelation 12 sign. Again, it lands perfectly. I don't have to push anything, change anything. Shabbat 11 is the 318th day of the year, starting the year on March the 17th. On the Hebrew timeline, it is 318, and the 318th day from March the 17th forward lands on January the 28th. It's a perfect match. Five years, five, is this the end of grace? Five years, five months, and five days. That's the next timeline I will be looking at. Um, well, that's the second one I'll be looking at, which is February the 28th. Oh, I said that wrong. 
February the 28th, 348 days, not 318, 348 days, exactly, 348 days, February the 28th. So here's that. I showed this to you before. Again, this is someone else's work. You can go up, to, up there. You see the website at the top, enochcalendars.webs.com, and you can look this up for yourself. Um, I'm going to show you how, in fact, the four star, somebody brought it to my attention in Discord, in uh, the Stellarium program, it does not skirt along the horizon. I'm going to show you how these programs are not correct. They are trying to compensate some way, somehow, for those 10 days. Some of them will skip in one year, and Stellarium will uh, calculate or divide it in amongst 100 years and move it very slowly but they'll move it uh and you'll you'll think it's not accurate but it is so this this event happens every year on march the 16th and it does it again every year on september the 14th what used to be the head of the year september 14th is exactly 182 days from the head of the year of march the 16th and you can divide that by seven 182 divided by seven is 26 weeks perfectly and again september the 15th being used to be rosh hashanah rosh hashanah now rosh hashanah is the only thing that moved nothing else moved feast of trumpets stayed here everything stayed here no we're removing the covering stayed here um but rosh hashanah is the only thing that moved to um march the 17th nissan one i'll do that in a second this person here just blew my mind with this comment, so I had to show it. And this is in Discord. It says, hi, Mike. I'm listening to your latest. And it just occurred to me that Jesus couldn't have started walking to Lazarus on the day of equal parts if that is indeed the Sabbath. There were only They were only allowed to walk a short distance on the Sabbath. Jesus would have needed to wait, I think, until after the Sabbath days are finished. So, this blows my mind. Rosh Hashanah is a two-day feast. I knew for some reason that Jesus did not begin walking for two days. Jesus knew the head of the year was March the 17th and that the last Sabbath was on March the 16th. The head of the year, Rosh Hashanah, is a two-day feast. He could not walk large distances on that day. So thank you uh, for that comment. That helped a lot. Again, it fits perfectly, which is why Jesus waited two days, and after two days, he walked for two days, and on the fourth day, he raised Lazarus, which I'll show you on the timeline here once we get to it. Uh, it's just a... Uh, Bible, uh, he will revive us after two days, and he will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. So what's one, what, what once was will be. This keeps happening. I just That just keeps happening. All right. March the 16th, the last Sabbath of the year in 2023. This is where the sun will be, and that's where the moon is down there. I want to show you that the moon does, in fact, keep perfect sync with the Sabbath every 19 years. And I'll show you that as we go forward here. Here we are in 2024. The moon is near Gemini on March the 16th, the last Sabbath of the year. Here the moon on March the 16th in 2025 is in Spica in the constellation Virgo. Here we are on March the 16th, the last Sabbath in 2026. This, the uh, moon, you can barely see it, but it's down below Aquarius. It's a dark black dot down there. And uh, it is, that's where it is in on March the 16th of 2026. Here we are on March the 16th, 2027, and the moon is in the, what was that constellation? I keep forgetting that. Uh, Gemini. The moon was in Gemini. Now I want you to notice here, in 2027, the moon is in Gemini, and here, in 
2024, three years earlier, it was before Gemini. So here we are, the moon is in Gemini. We go to the next one, and the moon is in Scorpius in 2028. Well, looky here, in 2029, exactly 19 years after the sun, this is the first sliver of the moon after the sun is in Pisces, which is the head of the year on March the 16th. One more day would be March the 17th, the head of the year in 2029. It matches perfectly. Now, we can go ahead to 2030, one more year, and you'll see the moon is not in that 19 years from 2029, which is 2048. There the moon is again, right there in Pisces. And on the 17th, it'll, it will see the first sliver of the moon showing us the head of the year. Every 19 years, the moon falls perfectly in place right there and right there again, 19 years. Here we are at the time of the cross. At the time of the cross, this is where the sun was, and that's where the moon was. We saw the first sliver of the moon after the sun reached Aries in 31 AD. I still show the cross in 29 AD, so it's around, I, I don't know what year yet. I'm still working on that, but I do know what day and what month uh, Jesus went to the cross. But here we are in 31 AD. You see the moon with its first sliver with the sun in Aries. Uh, this is just, again, um, them showing you that the uh, fourth star of Pegasus, named Algenib, will skirt along the horizon on March the 16th, pointing out the final Sabbath. And on the 17th uh, is the first day of the year, the new Rosh Hashanah. And this is the, it happens every 19th moon cycle, which I just showed you. Uh, constellations, let's see here. This guy sent me this, and he said the rapture doesn't occur until the seventh trump after the tribulation. And this is my response always when I see this. And it's, I just want to, I just want to bring, I don't want to say common sense, that's not nice. Um, I want to bring, I want you to think about that for a second. I want you to think about that for a second. If the rapture occurs at the end. There's a lot that goes on at, the, at, at that moment of the rapture. And let me show you what goes on at the moment of the rapture. So I said, so your belief, so it's your belief there is no rapture until after seven years of tribulation. Then we go to heaven. We eat a banquet. We go to a crowning ceremony. We cast our crowns at the feet of the one that actually deserves them. We go visit the mansions Jesus has been preparing, I said for, but for us, for a thousand, for uh, thousands of years, a couple thousand years. And those mansions are greater than anyone could possibly imagine. We get white robes, a rod of iron, and a white horse. Then we immediately, and if the rapture happens at the end of the tribulation, we immediately return with Christ to judge all those left behind and cast them straight into hell. There's no tribulation because apparently we're all going to go through tribulation and get uh, beat up and everything else. And then at the end, this is when the rapture will occur. He believes in one rapture. He believes at the end. This is not even mathematically, like this is not accurate, not even close. This is this is not even possibility. We are going before the first seal is opened. We're going prior to any wrath of God. Jesus already paid that penalty on the cross. The wrath of God it, uh, for us is over. It was paid for us in our place. We are as Barabbas, and it is paid in full. Oh, that keeps happening. And that keeps happening. Let's see here. Um, now, I want to point out, we see in Revelation these 24 elders, and I want to show you that the 24 elders are us. These are instructions to the elders. We are the elders. We are those who are dreaming about this day to arrive. 
uh, we've pretty much forsaken everything on this earth and I can only basically think about this and we're every single day searching this out, trying to figure it out. I don't have all the answers. I haven't seen anyone that has all the answers, but all of us have a piece of the puzzle and we seem to be, you know, uh, working very hard to try to understand this. It says, the elders which are among you, I exhort. So at some point, the elders which are among us are going to get pieces of information. Who, uh, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed? So um, Peter is saying that he is an elder and that he actually witnessed the sufferings of Christ. And he will be a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. So he knows he's an elder. He knows he's saved. He knows it. He doesn't know when it's going to happen. But he knows. So why would he make the next comment? Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not by filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, never as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. This is our job. We are to, we are to talk about it, but we're not to tell people that there's something wrong with you if you don't understand like I do or if you can't see what I see or why can't you figure this out like I have. Um, it'll be very quickly that you'll lose your gift when you act that way. We are to work together and I love all of the watchers that are trying to figure this out. Um, all those that know that Jesus Christ is God Almighty came here, shed off his... his uh, his, uh, his power in heaven to come here and live amongst us and die on a cross to pay the penalty for our sins as he did. And this was, I don't know why I did this. And came the king Nebuchadnezzar at the end of 12 months. He walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. So this is pride. This is this is what you're going to find in a lot of the churches is pride. I I'm better than you are because I dress nicer than you do. God has blessed me because I have more money than you do. Um, I drive a nicer car. I own an airplane. Obviously, uh, God is blessing me because I'm better than you are. I'm more faithful than you are. I've done more than you have. You're just lowly. And let me explain the Bible to you because, you know, you aren't smart enough to figure it out. I am, though. That's why God has blessed me. And these are those people. These are those people that will be standing there when the rapture occurs. They will be standing there and they will drop to their knees. And at that moment, they will shed off that uh, the world. They'll tear it off, realizing that they missed. They will tear off the world, just like um, Elisha did when he saw Elisha go up. He tore off his worldly possessions and put on the mantle, the salvation of Jesus Christ alone, not of any works, lest any man shall boast. And uh, he is secure, safe and secure, and he has a double portion. But he will go through. Elisha will go through tribulation. Elisha was caught up in a whirlwind and taken away. And so the king here is prideful. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. So he's very prideful. Let's see. Some of these pictures, I'm not quite sure why I took. Let's see. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. There's that word elder again. The elders are the bride. When... Um, Jacob was upset in the morning because he found out that he had laid with Leah and not with Rachel. The father said, no, it cannot be so. The elder must marry before the younger. Leah was the elder. She married. She was the bride of Jacob. 
he ultimately, seven days later, married Rachel and continued to work for seven years for Rachel. But he got Rachel after seven days. Likewise, he younger. So he would be talking to Rachel. Submit yourselves unto the elder, which he was talking to Leah, the bride. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Again, we are not prideful in this. This is a miracle, and for me anyway, that uh, God has blessed me with anything that I have uh, found out and discovered. It's, it's very humbling, actually. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that ye may exalt no, sorry, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So we're all going through the same thing. We're all, we're all, you know, I was talking to a Spinebreaker and Spinebreaker's, man, this is disappointing. It hasn't happened. What's going on? I just, I, I, I'm just, I want this event to take place. I can hardly wait. You know, what's taking so long? And uh, did, you know, did we mess up really bad somehow? And I told him, I said, I said, uh, Kevin, um, you are you are very unique. There's not very many of us. Look around you. Go on the internet. Go on television. Eight billion people are not looking for this event. Eight billion people could care less about this. They don't believe that this event is even going to happen. They are not looking forward to it. If you're heartbroken right now, and you're you're just at the end of your rope and you just you just don't know where else to go and you you're wondering when is this event going to have you getting frustrated i can see it in some of the comments you're getting frustrated that's a good place to be that means that you're watching only the watchers will feel that way imagine the bride locked away in her room waiting there for her groom to show up, waiting for that trumpet blast. And what does she do? She's ready to go. Her, she's got her, her uh, candle full of oil. She's ready to go. She falls asleep. She falls asleep. It's because God does it all. At the end of the day, you know, I, I even thought, you know, I mean, that we're going to get this three-day warning. What if this comment that's coming in at, I think it's 26,000 miles an hour. Some are saying it's six foot. Some are saying it's 20 foot. Another one said it was 100 foot. So nobody really knows how big this thing is. What if inbound, it were to hit a specific place on earth, like, oh, I don't know, Damascus. Would that be a huge sign? You know what I'm saying? That would be a, a monstrous sign for us to know that three days uh, this event's going to happen. So... Let me get back to this. It's a good place to be that you're stressed over this. Uh, there's so many people that don't care. They, they could care less. They're going to when the rapture occurs. That's when they're going to become Christian. That's when they're going to become the greatest watchers this world has ever seen. That's when that number will be innumerable. It'll be huge. And uh, that'll be a, uh, that, that, that's your, that, that's your comfort right there, knowing that you're in fact watching you know so i guess um nebuchadnezzar says at the end of days i nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and mine understanding returned unto me and i blessed the most high and i praised and honored him that liveth forever and ever so at the end of the seven years the jews are going to look up and uh praise god and realize the one that they pierced uh, 2,000 years earlier is actually their savior and not somebody that they're searching for right now. They will be deceived for a little while. And it says, uh, this is where, uh, yeah, okay, so I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the spirit of grace and of supplications and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced and they shall mourn for him. They're going to cry. They're going to say, man, these Christians weren't crazy after all. This, he was 
the Christ. He was our leader. He just didn't come the way we wanted him to come. We wanted him to come as a lion, but he came as a lamb. We couldn't follow the lamb. We needed to follow a lion. And they're going to realize when he comes back as a lion that uh, that they messed up. It says, as one mourneth for his only son, it shall be in bitterness for him. And one that is in bitterness for his firstborn in that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem. They're going to know. Oh, that keeps happening. Okay, I'm going to give a shout out to a few channels. Um, why do I do this? If you're not subscribed to them, please go subscribe to them. They do a lot of good work and a lot of information that I find and numbers and, and, and different things I find on these other YouTubes. Um, I don't agree with everything they say. It's not the point. The point is you don't agree with everything I say. I'm sure they don't agree with everything I say either. Um, it's not the point. The point is to glean information and tidbits here and there and put that puzzle together for yourself. Your salvation is up to you. It is up to you to uh, to figure this out and how this all works. So it's up to us to bring you as much information as we can. So let me give you a shout out again. Go subscribe to their channels. And uh, we can only hope, we can only hope that when this rapture does occur, and for seven years that they will have power and internet and uh, somebody's channel, somebody's channel will get found um, for whatever reason and they will see it. And in there, will they will see maybe, you know, talk about, hey, you're in the seven years and it's going to be rough, but Jesus is the only way into heaven. And then they're going to, uh, you know, give their life to Christ and be saved at that point. So that's why I feel these videos, I mean, you can leave behind, like I have left behind, you know, a whole notebook explaining what just happened and um, showing them that, uh, you know, tear off all that stuff that you thought was saving you. It's not saving you. Or it's why God likes, it, that's why God says, I prefer you hot or cold. I don't like you lukewarm. You know why he doesn't like you lukewarm? I love walking up to somebody that knows absolutely nothing about any of this and talking to them about all of this. And they're absolutely amazed. They're just amazed. But when you walk up to somebody who thinks they've got it all figured out and they're completely dead wrong on their understanding. Well, I've been, I, I was a bad person before. I was really bad before, but I work so hard every day not to be bad anymore. So I know that because I work so hard that I'm saved now. No, you're saved. Don't get me wrong. But you haven't surrendered everything. It's not any work of yourself. The work Jesus did, it's so hard to, to, to the, the wheat there, it's so hard to take them apart and, and explain that to somebody. It's really hard to explain that to somebody. Yes, you're not good because you're working at it every day. You're good because you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you can't imagine doing the things that you used to do. You don't do those things anymore. The thought doesn't even cross your mind. It's a horrifying thought of the things I've done in the past. I can't even want to think about them, you know. Um, so it's not a work that you do every day. Oh, if I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure I pray at this time. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that in it. And I'm going to please God by virtue of that. No. You're going to do all of those things because you're saved. You're not doing all of those things to stay saved or to become saved. You're doing them because it's the fruit. It's the evidence of what you are. So anyway, let me go back into this. It's a very controversial uh, area to talk about. Supernatural by Design is channels growing by leaps and, and bounds. I love Jarrett's um, mathematics that he goes through. He does a lot of good work. Of course, he has graphics. I don't, but he does a, a very good job uh, on his YouTube and uh, his countdowns and everything. We are not on the same head of the year, but it doesn't matter because I'm not saying that I'm right and he's wrong. He could very well be right and I could be wrong, but he's he does a phenomenal job. I love his channel. Of course, uh, Mark Allison, 88. Um, he really links up a lot of stuff on his uh, YouTube. I love the way uh, his energy that uh, that he has and the things that he finds really help out, uh, for me anyway, letting me know that the day is, is upon us. It's right here. 
We just can't quite put our finger on exactly what day, but we are right in the thick of things. One year ago, we were talking about the Festival of Trees. We were talking about, you know, Shabbat 11 was 11-11. We didn't have, I know that a lot of people are saying that they were seeing 11-11. They have for years, but I haven't seen as much of that going on as I am seeing right now. And it has to mean something that we're all seeing this. Nobody's just... I know I'm not just walking around staring at my clock. Okay, it's uh, it's 11, you know, oh five. Let me keep watching it until 11, 11. No, that's not what's happening. I'm opening my phone, and it says 11, 11, and I'm taking a quick screenshot. Why is that even there? And it's not like, it's not like, um, and I'm getting texts at 11, 11, or things speaking of 11, 11, or 1, 11, or 9, 11. It's, it's so many of that, ha- so much of that happening. It's it's impossible to ignore. So Mark Allison's a very good channel. This guy right here. Now I would go. This this is from three months ago or eight months ago. The three rapture harvests from the churches. Now he's very good. He's very uh, very faithful, and I like listening to him. Um, I believe his name is Wayne. I want to say Wayne. Don't get mad at me if your name. <laughs> Uh, but I, I know him by We Are the Overcomers. And uh, go watch. He, he does most of his stuff live, which is why the the newest video that you're seeing here is eight months ago. You have to click on the live button to see his most recent content. I don't do stuff live um, just, just because uh, you know, normally you do live when you're on with other people. And uh, I go live on other channels so- sometimes. But for the most part, I do. I just make a video with my phone. But anyway, Wayne uh, does a very good job here, and uh, I love his channel. I love his demeanor. Humble Seeker, if I recall, uh, Humble Seeker uh, is looking at the Enoch timeline as well. The latest videos that I've watched, he's um, a couple of days off from me. I'm not sure how we separated from the head of the year being March the 17th to where we currently are towards the end of the year. Um, but of course, I mean, math, right? I could be, I could, I I don't see a mistake on here, but, uh, could happen. So anyway, I I love his channel too. Uh, Humble Seeker. I want to say his name is Mike. Again, I know you by Humble Seeker. Don't get mad at me. believe his name is Mike, just like mine. I believe. I could be wrong. He's going to be mad if I got that wrong. (laughs) Isaiah 53. Um, Love his channel. He does a really good job. Um, he, he uh, I want to say, uh, finds some 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 stuff, and he really cuts to your heart when he talks and when he when he has his videos. He really tells you how it is. He's not afraid to tell you how it is. And I like those kind of people who aren't out for numbers. I'm not out for numbers. I don't care about numbers. I want to cut straight to your soul and right to your heart and make you realize that you're going to spend an eternity somewhere. You're going to spend an eternity somewhere. That's up to you. It's a free gift. It's available to anybody. I don't care what you did. I don't care what you did in the past. It's a free gift. And all you have to do is humble yourself and tear off this world and uh, watch the Holy Spirit go to work in your soul after that. End Times Talk. I think I just found this one. End Times Talk. Um, I don't recall, I know I liked it, and I uh, I uh, subscribed to it because it was a good channel, so I wanted to, to give it to you to go subscribe to and watch as well. Oh, I copied this. I wanted to show you something. I wanted to show you something. Now, I love the Jewish people. Pray for the Jewish people. The Jewish people are our timepiece. The Jewish people are... Israel is what we're supposed to look to. Like the fourth star of Algenib, it actually does that in Jerusalem. That fourth star skirts along the horizon in Jerusalem each year on March the 16th, uh, indicating the final Sabbath of the year. So we love the Jewish people. And um, let me go back to the, the picture. The Jewish people have been deceived for a very long time. It's why they celebrate Rosh Hashanah in September and not in March like they're supposed to. God said, this now will be the head of your year. Um, God reversed the calendar 182 days from September the 15th up to March the 17th. And this 
is what happened. This is where the moon came in. This is a warning uh, of what happened. Now, we say, well, they've been doing it for over 2,000 years. It doesn't make it right. The new moon calendar was the official calendar of the Greeks. What language is the Bible written in? Uh, was a New Testament or Old Testament written in Greek? I believe it's Old Testament. And when Alexander the Great conquered the Middle East in the 4th century BC, 400 years before Jesus Christ, the lunar calendar was introduced and was gradually accepted by most of the people except for the Hebrew people. They knew that they had a commandment from God to start the head of their year. This is where they lost it. They were celebrating it on March the 17th. This is where they lost it. And then when they tried to put it back together, they wound up on September the 15th. The lunar calendar was introduced and was gradually accepted by most of the people, except for the Hebrew people, in 172, 172 years before Christ. King Antichus appointed Menelaus as Jerusalem high priest to introduce the Greek way of educating the young people and to completely Hellenize the Hebrew people. He also sent a senator from Athens to give the Hebrew people an ultimatum to forsake the laws of their God and follow the king's orders or to be put to death. Most of the Hebrew people followed the king's orders. Now this is what? This is the new sliver of the moon when the sun is in Aries. This is where the Greeks got this from. They worshipped the moon. The moon does not line up with a month. The month is either 30 or 31 days. It is not 28 or 29 and a half. It does still witness. The moon still witnesses, but the moon is not how you start your year, nor is how you start each month. And this is where it came from. This is why the Jews do it, have done it for over 2,400 years. So most of the Hebrew people followed the king's orders to save their families, and many were put to death. King Antichus forced the Hebrew people to celebrate the birthday of the month, every month, at the time the moon's first visibility, the first sliver. And that keeps happening, and that keeps happening, oh, and that keeps happening. If you were to stand outside your house every single day and take a picture of the sun with a camera that had a, a, a filter on it, the sun would be one, I'm sorry, every single week, 52 times a year, every single week, this is what you would see. The sun would move in a figure eight in the sky. If you just put your camera in one spot and took a picture, that's the sun's position every single day I'm sorry, every single week for one year, and the sun would return back to where it started. So I got this off the internet. I think I've showed you this before, but I put this on here. I wanted to show you that, for example, June 21st indeed is the longest day of the year. However, on June the 15th is when the sun reaches the Tropic of Cancer at 23.5 degrees. It stays in the Tropic of Cancer until June the 30th, 15 days later. It leaves the Tropic of Cancer to go this the height of summer. The same thing happens down here at the bottom. It enters on December the 15th, the 23.5 degrees in the Tropic of Capricorn, and it stays there until December the 30th, where it leaves the 23.5 degree lowest point of where the sun is. This is winter to us. The shortest day of the year falls right in the center of that. So what they did was, we'll take the shortest day and call it the day first day of winter. But that is not accurate. The first day of winter is December the 15th. The reason I say that is because December the 15th is where the sun reaches the 23.5 degree mark. There is 47 degrees separating the two marks from summer to winter. 
The reason I say that it starts on December the 15th and comes out on December the 30th, well, you can see it, it does. But the reason I say that is God made sure to let us know that winter starts on December the 15th because when God said the day is over at nightfall, he could have said the day is over in the middle of the night at the 12 o'clock hour, but it is not over at midnight at the 12 o'clock hour in Israel. It is over the second the sun goes down. It's still that day for us. We still on that same day for you know another five or six hours. On December the 15th is the um, first day of winter. Guess what? December the 15th is the date that Hanukkah ends. It falls right on here. I don't have to make this happen. It just does. Tevet 1, December the 15th, the last day of Hanukkah. So, um, on June the 15th, the tops of the mountains are seen while Noah is on the ark. The tops of the mountains are seen. And that the sun is at the very top. It stays at the very top for 15 days, June the 15th. So I think, and this I've had this argument with people, how are you going to say some months are four days less than other months? How are you going to do that? It's supposed to equalize, and it does. On the 15th, the four star of Algenib skirts along the horizon on September the 15th. By June the 15th, the sun reaches its highest point in the Tropic of Cancer. <clears throat> it comes out on June the 30th, 15 days later. It comes down here, again, the day of equal parts. Uh, happens in March. This is post-flood. The day of equal parts happened in, you see how we have the, uh, the check mark or the V right there? It happens before the flood, before God uh, changed the, uh, the, the day to the head of the year. The day of equal parts was actually on September the 15th. It moved, or maybe the four star of El Algenib was there, but it moved. And now it is on March the 16th. So you can see uh, June the 15th, March the 16th. You have uh, December the 15th. You have uh, September the 15th. So there's your four quarters. They all happen on the 15th day of the month. Uh, let's see here. In the year 3023, which is 2000, let's say 1,000 years from now, you see the four star, and this is what I wanted to show uh, the commenter on Discord, four star Algenib is below the horizon. It's supposed to be skirting along the horizon, right? But that's what this program shows. Here we are again, and right now it's showing the four star of Algenib way below the horizon. So either I'm wrong or this program is wrong. Here we are, just a thousand years ago, it's way above the horizon. Here we are right now, it's way below the horizon. Here we are a thousand years from now, it's somewhat below the horizon, so it's kind of going further down. And then all of a sudden here we are in 1023 and it's way above the horizon. Do you know what would happen to the planet? If it jostled that far in a thousand years, what if I could show you this planet would jostle in one day on this program? This is 23 AD, 2,000 years ago. The four star of Algenib is above the horizon, just like it is here. It hasn't budged, actually. It's right there in the same spot, 2,000 years. And then all of a sudden here in today's time, it's way below. So it was way above Algenib. Now it's way below. Let's show you something else here. In 2006, it actually skirted along the horizon. That's exactly where Algenib is supposed to be spotted every year on March the 16th at 545 in the morning. Right there in 2006. But look here. 2007. One year later, it moved that far below the horizon, which indicates none of these programs are accurate, exactly accurate as to where they're supposed to be showing. The four-star Algenib did not move that far. It would have ripped our planet apart. It could not have moved that far in one year, March the 16th, the last Sabbath, March the 16th. So they're trying to do that correction for those 10 days that the church put in, and this program chose to do it on 2006, 2007. And I can show you that 10-day correction right here. 
Again, the planet would rip itself apart if it moved this much in 1952. Now, in 1752, sorry, in 1752, but we know in 1582, I believe it was, is when they took those 10 days out of the calendar. They've All these programs are trying to fix that concept. So 1752, the day of equal parts, March the 5th. But we've been saying it's March the 16th since the beginning of time until the end. How did this happen? Here we are, 1753, one year later. They just chose the year 1753 to make this correction that they did for those 10 days. If we actually moved our planet that far in one year, it would have ripped the planet apart. So it did not happen. Nobody saw any event that happened in 1752 or 1582 when they did the 10-day thing. So that's why these programs will never be 100% accurate. So if you go to them, keep that in mind. Um, so, okay, this is what I found. I thought it was really cool. I'm trying to get done here real quick. Um, this is what I found, though. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed, so she conceived right there, and born a man-child, so we have a birth. That's the second thing. Then she shall be unclean for seven days, so we have seven days right there. And according to the days of separation from her family, shall she be unclean. In the eighth day, the child will have to be circumcised. Well, there's another item. In the eighth day, the child has to be circumcised. And she shall continue in her blood of her purifying three, uh, continue in the blood of her purifying 33 days. That's a total of 40 days from when she gave birth. 40 days exactly. The lunar eclipse happened on November the 8th. I didn't even put it on my timeline because I could not figure out why it did not land on a single date. This was a very important um, uh, blood moon that happened, and it did not fall on anything on my timeline. So I left it off because I, I didn't know if it meant anything or what it meant. But remember, this is the blood moon that when it eclipsed Uranus, it actually turned white exactly at the moment it eclipsed Uranus. It went from blood red to white. It was the coolest thing ever. This is a huge sign. So why doesn't it fall on my timeline? Why does the blood cleaned after 40 days for a woman who gives birth to a male child? And why did this moon turn from blood red to white as it eclipsed Uranus? Let's see here. September the 29th, I have on my timeline as the date that Jesus was born. Guess what happens exactly 40 days later? I just found this, and I was like mind-blown. I'm like, there it is. There it is. That's why. That blood moon, as it eclipsed Uranus, which means heaven, and turned white. Perfect rapture scenario, which we went past. But amazingly, it lands on November the 8th. And that is exactly 40 days after the date that I have figured out on this timeline that Jesus was born. Exactly 40 days later, that event took place. Blew my mind. This is what we saw back on November the 8th. Um, uh, back then, we could see the moon was blood red, and it was actually tinted red and would turn white as it crossed over Uranus. I believe it took... I want to say it took one hour for that to happen, exactly one hour for that event to happen. Let's see what this is about. Hezekiah said, it is, oh, and remember, when God turns time, he never turned it forward. There's not one recorded moment in the Bible where time was turned forward. I remember what this is. This is a, a thing that I read. Okay, so let's go over here. We start our year on March the 16th. This is the date that Lazarus died, and Mary and Martha bury him. They have touched blood, so they are unclean for seven days. This is the day Jesus makes the comment, are there not 12 hours in the day? When in fact, on March the 16th, there is exactly 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. This is correct. This is the day that Lazarus died. We go forward. Jesus resurrected Lazarus on March the 20th. This is the day he resurrected him four days later. He has a meal with Mary and Martha. He cannot have this meal with Mary and Martha 
any earlier than this because Mary and Martha have touched Lazarus. They were unclean for seven days. So on March the 23rd, they were clean. So they prepared the meal the next day and Jesus came to eat with Lazarus, Mary and Martha. Isn't it funny that Lazarus, the dead one, doesn't have to stay unclean for seven days after he was resurrected by Jesus. He does not have to stay um, uh, perform any ceremonies or be unclean for seven days. The dead guy. But the people that touched him, which he is now alive, are the ones that are uh, held to the seven days because they touched him, even though now he's alive. Four days after Lazarus was resurrected, Jesus has a meal with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. One year earlier, previous to this, is the date that Jesus turns the water to wine. March the 26th is Jesus' triumphant entry, four days before the cross. Six days after the meal with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Six days after Jesus is on the cross. Four days after his triumphant entry, he um, is on the cross after his triumphant entry. This is also the date the Bible records as 150 days later, the water subsides. 150 days later, the water subsides. This is the day John was born. Jesus rose on a, for lack of a better name, Sunday morning, the first day of the week. He rose early Sunday morning before sunrise. Um, he rises. He goes to the cross on Wednesday. He rises Sunday morning. He is in the grave Wednesday night, Thursday night, and Friday night. He is in the grave on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He rises Sunday morning. We do not count Saturday night in the grave because he rose before the time. And if we've learned anything from all of this studying that we're doing, Jesus is not going to come before the time. He is not going to advance time forward. He's always going to bring it back so that Satan can't complain about losing a minute of his time. But God has now six months and one day to play with on the timeline because he, in fact, moved time back six months. Rosh Hashanah was on September the 15th. This is the date that God told Noah, I'm sorry, Moses, to move the time back six months. This now will be the head of your year. He began calling that March the 16th. They had to repeat all of those months that they had just finished all the way up to Tishri 1. They had to, to finish, they had to repeat everything from March to April, May, June, July, August, and September. All those months that they just finished, they had to repeat them. And then Joshua's long day, one day, six months and one day, is exactly how much time was repeated. And God has this six months and one day in his pocket. That's his time. He could not go forward in time. Satan would have complained too much. Jesus rises Sunday morning, defeats death. Um, let's go back here towards the end. Right about... Right here, I wanted to show you. I have Jesus born on tabernacles, Sukkot. Jesus comes in tabernacles with us. And down here at the bottom, we have the 40 days. I could not figure out why that blood moon light. We are, we are so going home so soon because this is a sign for us that we're in the mix of it right now. We are going home so soon. I can't even stress that enough. We are about to be pulled out of here at any moment any moment. We don't have any dates that we have to wait for. These types of signs, like this one, where Jesus is born on September the 29th, and 40 days later, there is a blood moon on November the 8th that has wiped, like, changed from blood red to white um, the way it was at that exact moment, crossing over heaven. On that November the 8th, I did, again, I didn't write it down because I, I just couldn't. I, I, I didn't know what it meant until like the, the other day I was uh, awestruck by it. Now up here at the top, there are now, there were four events proving to me that Jesus was born on September the 29th. Now this, 40 days, and the blood moon on the 8th 
has my is my fifth proof of that the latest one uh, i think that's five is plenty the end of grace the first day um example or the the first event mary conceives seven and this is on christmas day Seven days later, on New Year's Day, the egg attaches itself to the uterine wall. You can look that up. It takes a moment. The, the egg has to travel, and it attaches itself to the uterine wall. It has to travel through. I'm going to get trouble. I think fallopian tubes, but I'm not uh, a doctor. I only play one on TV. But uh, the, the, it travels and goes to the uterus, and it plants itself on the uterine wall by the seventh day. There's a. There's a. Again. We're talking about Jesus, God Almighty right here. Everything he does is going to be perfect in every way. Forty weeks exactly to the day, 280 days, the perfect gestation period of a baby. Not one day more, not one day less, to the very day from December the 25th, Jesus is born on Tabernacles, September the 29th. Event number three, his birth. Event number four, now remember, it has to land on something that means something. Tabernacles mean something. Jesus came to tabernacle with us. He is born. When did Jesus leave heaven? Well, he left heaven right over here when Mary conceived. That's when he left heaven. He went into the womb as a fetus. And that is why we know that abortion is just not even remotely acceptable. When Mary conceived. She I wonder if I don't know if my headset just quit working. I don't want to stop the video if it did. Let me see here. Uh, says it's connected. I don't know. I'll just keep going. If it uh, disconnected, then I don't know what to do about it. Okay. So, uh, this is where Mary conceives. This is the date that uh, Mary leaves. And Elizabeth is exactly six months pregnant. She walks for seven days. She travels to see her cousin Elizabeth, and Jesus is only seven days in the womb at this point. This is when he comes here. He doesn't come here when he's born. He comes here when he's conceived. And then over here, um, Jesus is born on September the 29th, exactly 40 days later. The time it takes for a woman to be clean after giving birth to a male child the blood moon appears and is turned white as it eclipses Uranus, which means heaven. And on the eighth day, Jesus is circumcised. Example number four, point number four, that must fit in. All these events must fit in on the timeline. This is the end of tabernacles. It is an eight-day feast. The last day of tabernacles, Jesus is circumcised. So I really don't know. If I lost audio there, my headset said it was disconnected, but it didn't say it was reconnected. So I don't know if I lost audio for a moment or for very long, but we're at the very end of the video. If I did, I will explain in the comment section. I don't want to remake this <laughs> this whole video for a few moments, but I'll stop it right here. Um, we go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody and accept the Lord into your heart. And uh, go like, comment, and share on those uh, channels I told you to, and uh, subscribe to them. All right, Repo Man 64, we will uh, talk to you again. If anything comes to me like that, Blood Moon thing, mind blown when I saw that. So we'll chat with you later.